just end it? Why doesn't he just wipe it off the face of the earth? Um, why does he stop it today? And the question there is, we don't know why. We don't know why he allowed it. We don't know why he's not stopping it. But we still have to go back to the, to the truth of the Bible, that he is sovereign. It is his providential plan for a reason. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But, um, and then some people will say, well, is he not powerful? I mean, is, he, is the virus stronger than he is? Because if, it, if he's all powerful, he could snap his fingers and the virus would be gone. He is all powerful. The Bible tells us that. He is all powerful. He is almighty. There is nothing that our God cannot do. He says that. There's nothing that's impossible for me. But we have to come to the place that we accept that, God, you have a plan that we can't see. And I like to think of it like a jigsaw puzzle where there's all these pieces and we can only see a few of the pieces. God sees the whole puzzle and all the pieces together. He, he can see the end result of this and how it's going to play into his overall plan. And that's where we just have to trust. And I know it's hard, but we have to come to that, that place that we trust him. And, and let me say too, it's okay to ask those questions. God, why? But we don't want to stay there. We don't want to accuse him. We need to continue to go back and go, God, I don't understand. And that's the other thing. God never once in scripture says, you need to understand. He simply says, trust me. And we may not understand the side of heaven. Why? But God is in control because that's what scripture tells us. And I think it's um, Arthur Pink who said, if God is not sovereign, he's not God. It is a major attribute of God. And so it's what makes him God. So that's, that's one of the things that, um, you know, we've got to just remember. And the word makes it clear that he is God. And, you know, I think, too, you wonder, and, and people have asked me, why, why do we have so much trouble with the sovereignty or the providence of God? Why is that hard for us sometimes to, to just accept? And I, I really think it's because we like to be in control. And let's face it, right now in this pandemic, we're not in control. We're not in control of what we're going to find at the grocery store. You know, we're not in control of, of jobs, of our money. Are we gonna have enough money to pay for food tomorrow? And it scares us and we'd much rather be in control ourselves. So I think that's one of the reasons that people struggle mm. with accepting the sovereignty of God, the providence of God, because that means if he's in control, I'm not. And the truth is we're not. Well, that's a fascinating um, uh, concept to understand, especially from a biblical perspective. Uh, first of all, that yes, we agree that we want to make things in our control. And if they are out of control, we freaked out. Right. And that, that's what we saw at our stores, at our, <laughs> at our grocery stores and everywhere. And, and we saw the human behavior, how much scared they are uh, mm -hmm. when, when things are totally out of their hands. And why, especially during this time uh, of, uh, of Easter story and the resurrection story, we saw that, that Jesus Christ, while he was walking with his, with his disciples, and when even uh, I saw, I read, the, especially the Gospel of John, uh, gives us some glimpses of the question uh, around causes, why this happened, like uh, God, John chapter 9, when they saw uh, a person who was uh, born blind, and when they asked, who have sinned? So lots of people are finding sins behind, uh, behind this one, and um, but Jesus answered that, oh, this is not because nobody has sinned, actually, it was because God's glory was shown off. And then same thing happened with, uh, at the grave of the Lazarus, when, when Mary says that if you would be here, it would not happen. Again, question of sovereignty rather than the process, which, uh, which Jesus has a bigger picture. This is a wonderful concept. And I think uh, while, um, as, a, as a student of um, uh, God's word, I have also experienced these lots of things and try to understand. And I came to know that the possible response which I observe 
in this situation is that God is sovereign. God is on the throne, but he is with us. He's suffering with yes. us yes. as a man. He is suffering. with. That's why he wept at the grave of the Lazarus. He wept at the, at the city of Jerusalem. And, um, uh, and, and that's why he suffered actually. Uh, to identical, to become identity with us, with human beings. That's powerful. Thank you. So, uh, uh, in this way, uh, when we come to the uh, to the point that we don't, as a human being, we don't need to have answer. There are a few mysteries which only unfold when we will reach to our eternity. So, right. uh, but so far we have to trust. But while we are in this process as a human being, we are weak, we are fragile, uh, uh, we we scared out. And uh, how Bible help us? What are the characters? And uh, Bible tell us that how can we go through these valley of shadows? How can we sustain ourselves and anchor in God's word? Can you, can you help us out to understand that point? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and the Bible really does give us examples. It's like I was telling you, I've been going back through these prayers in the Bible study on bended knee. And going back, I've, I've just been reminded of how each of these men responded to overwhelming situations. Uh, for instance, David. You know, David became um, king. God appointed him as king. And, and you wonder, well, God, why didn't you just hand him the throne? Why did you put him in such a hard situation where he had a Saul was not going to let him be king easily? And, and he had... Saul was trying to kill him and men were trying to kill him. And why God? And, and you, you wonder why, but then you look at how David responded to those hard times and David just lamented. And I think you've talked some about lamenting and David's laments in the past. And David poured out his heart to the Lord. And because of going through those difficulties that he didn't understand, he wrote some of the most powerful words that today strengthen us as we're going through this pandemic or any hard time in our lives. And so I think one thing we need to do, how do we respond is that we lament, we, we pour out our heart to the Lord, but we always do what David did. He always came back at the end of the song with praise. He would, he would pour out his complaint Ask God why, how long? And then he would say, but God, you are God. I love you. I trust you. And so David is a great example of how to handle these times in, in, of crisis when we don't understand. You know, another character that comes to mind, um, and I've thought about him a lot during this coronavirus, is Job. Job suffered greatly. And the first two chapters of Job you know, he loses his family, he loses everything he owned. And people right now are losing things. They're, they're losing family from this coronavirus. They're losing uh, possessions, they're losing their jobs, they're losing their security. And uh, with Job, it wasn't because of anything that he did. It wasn't because of sin, like you mentioned in, the, in John. It wasn't for that, and it wasn't, um, a chess game between God and Satan. And Job was the pawn being pushed back and forth because at the end of chapter two, um, we don't hear about Satan anymore in the book of Job, but Job's suffering continued. And so God had a purpose for what happened to Job. And Job did what David did. He lamented, he questioned God, he cried out to God. He accused God. He even said, why did you even let me be born if this was going to be my life? Kill me now. Which I'm sure there are people that are so discouraged now that they're saying those same words. And, and yet, when we get to the end of the book of Job, we see God's purpose and we see how Job attested to God's sovereignty. In, in Job 42.2, he said, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. That's saying, God, I know you're sovereign. I mean, no purpose, your purpose will not be stopped. And I, I accept it. 
And then he went on in, in verse five and said, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. God's purpose in that was not to prove Satan wrong. It was to work in Job's life and draw him into a deeper intimacy with him. And I, I pray that we as believers come out of this stronger in our walk with the Lord than when we went into this pandemic. That when we are let loose in the streets again, in our churches again, that we're not the same people, that we have gone deeper with God, mm. that he's going to use this to draw us deeper. You know, I, I, I admit you've talked about Jesus and the, the crucifixion and the resurrection, and I think he's another example of, of working through this and the sovereignty of even his father. You know, when you study the, the Garden of Gethsemane and his prayers, mm. he fell before the father and would ask him, Father, if there's any way to do this, if you can take this cup from me, is there another way to accomplish your plan other than my death? Then do it. I mean, could we do it? In other words, he was struggling with God's plan as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And yet, every time he would say, not my will, but yours be done. He, he poured out his heart to God and expressed to the Father what he was feeling. But then, not my will, but yours. He, he submitted to the sovereignty of his Father and that plan. And then just one last, uh, oh, and then also Jesus on the cross. Um, we don't think about this often, but on the cross, he cried out to the Father and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, he does relate. You mentioned this, Eric. He does relate as man to what we're feeling. There are people right now that are saying, God, where are you in this? Why aren't you doing something? Have you forgotten me? Jesus hung on the cross and cried out to his father, why have you forsaken me? But then shortly after, he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He submitted to the father's plan, to his sovereignty. And then one last character uh, is Paul. And gosh, there's so much you could say about Paul. And Paul went through hard times. I mean, he even says in 2 Corinthians 11, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked, he was stoned, he had sleepless nights, he was hungry, he was thirsty, he went without food, he was exposed, um, he was cold. People are going without food now. People are hungry, they're feeling shipwrecked. Their lives are, many, their lives, they feel like they're falling apart. Paul went through those things, and yet Paul is the one who penned those famous words in Romans 8.28 that we don't always like. But Romans 8.28, when he said, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You know, Paul knew what pain was like. He knew what it was like to suffer. And yet, he knew that God was sovereign. He was in control and that he would work all things together for good, for his purpose. And again, it comes back to that bigger picture, that bigger puzzle that we can only see this piece or this piece. And God is, is working all these things together, even this coronavirus pandemic. He is using it for good. We may not see right now, but someday we will. And, and Eric, I'm sure you've seen some ways that God is using this for good in your church, probably. Yes, and um, you know, uh, taking this uh, idea uh, of this uh, trusting God, and I see that in a in a reciprocal style, in a in a in a reverse side. Mostly, we teach and we preach and we talk uh, people that we need to trust God. But from the story of Job. What I observe, another thing, God trusted on Job. That's interesting. Yes. That's, that's a powerful paradigm. That's a good point. You know, 
that when Satan provoked, I can't say provoke, but 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 the idea actually over there that 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 he will he will uh, he will blaspheme you and he will deny you. Just touch me, uh, allow me to touch him and allow me to touch his possession and business and family and everything, and then he will he will defy you. And God has a perfect and a, a blind trust on Job. Yeah. My always challenge to, to believers is we always trust God and God has never failed us. Right. If God trusts us, can we, can we will be there when he wants us to be there? You know? So that's, uh, that's one of the, and from the book of Job, we see that end of the book, he has everything multiplying. Uh, beside his 10 kids gone back. And I was wondering why God has not given him 20 kids, you know? <laughs> but anyway, that, that was cross, that was cross cultural question. You know? <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So, and especially the, the uh, characters which you have shared, uh, they're powerful, uh, uh, inspirational characters. And especially the garden of Gethsemane, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a powerful prayer. And even Jesus said, and according to Mark that I'm going to die, uh, and uh, and I'm I'm so much disturbed and so much pressure over there, and um, uh, um, so so yes, these 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 are these are things. And the question amid this uh, COVID nineteen is not upon what God is. Can we trust in God or not? But I think can God trust us or right. not? How are we going to respond? Here you go. Yeah. So uh, the pandemic. Yeah, concerning to responses, uh, there are lots of funny things if you are watching closely social media and because, you know, my parents living in Pakistan and then I have families living around the world and then I'm, I'm closely watching what's happening and uh, there are lots of, lots of funny things coming out, lots of outrageous people responses. Uh, so people are behaving uh, like nuts over there and they are trying to bring in all biblical uh, uh, responses, whatever they found, uh, even in the children of Israel and wherever they are trying to do. Have you found something like this in North American culture, and especially in your neighborhood, while people are trying to responding in a way, uh, trying to be more spiritual, trying to be more like a super spiritual even, and uh, they are trying to doing something uh, on the name of the Bible, on the name of the biblical experience. Have you found something in your context and some, somewhere? How people are responding? Uh, you know, most people that, that I'm around in, in the church and that I, am a, uh, that I talk to regularly are really uh, just kind of calmly accepting this and, and they're taking it a, a day at a time. There are some people who, uh, you know, even watching on the news, some of the, the churches that, you know, refuse to follow the guidelines of this, their governor or their mayors and continue to meet. And it was almost like saying, um, you're not going to tell us what to do with our God. We trust our God and we're going to meet him and he's bigger than the coronavirus and we're going to meet. And I understand that, but I have to say it kind of bothered me because, and I heard another pastor say, it's like you don't step out in front of a car that's speeding towards you and say, I know my God will protect me, so I am going to do what I want to do. That's kind of how that felt, was that we're going to continue to meet, even though we need to be socially distancing, we're going to trust our God. You know, yes, we can trust our God, but but we want to be wise in the way we respond to this pandemic. And we don't want to put people in danger, whether, you know, it's an older person that maybe they're very vulnerable and we don't want to use our, our faith and say, I trust God's going to protect her. And then we, we almost test God by saying, here, I'm going to do this. Now stop that speeding car. Mm. Um, we need to just be obedient to our, our, uh, government to our, they're not, it's, it's not a matter of our faith of why they're asking us not to meet. It's more a matter of our neighbor and responding to our neighbor and what's best for them. And what's best for them is to not get together. And so that's more of what I've seen. Um, and that is kind of that, what you were talking about, that hyper spiritual, super spiritual, look at us, we're gonna meet, we're not afraid of the coronavirus. 
And I don't think any church that's not meeting is saying that they're afraid of the coronavirus. They're trying to do the right thing that has been given to us to do by the government. And so we're being obedient to that. We're still meeting. Uh, we're still growing. And, and we're seeing God work in through even our live streaming. I had a friend share with me after Easter Sunday how they had so many people watching their live stream service more than a normal Easter Sunday. And they had people that actually came to Christ that Sunday as a result. And God is still at work while we're obeying the government, you know, directions to not meet together. What concerns me is when people use their faith to kind of just say, I'm not listening. We're going to do our thing. We trust our God. And they're not being wise. They're, they're, they're just not putting on, I don't think, a good testimony. Well, thank you very much because uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a matter of wisdom, number one. And number two is caring your neighbor rather than showing your ignorance and, um, uh, and saying that on the name of, uh, name of faith and religion that we are not going to obey. Uh, you know, because in Pakistan and around the Muslim world, now after one week, uh, the month of Ramadan is starting. And mm -hmm. uh, during the month of Ramadan, especially in Pakistan, I have just saw the uh, news uh, that uh, the, whole, uh, uh, the whole council of the mosque in Pakistan they have announced after meeting with the president that they are following these instruction about social distancing, but they are opening these mosques for a public gathering. And this is a, this is a bit a kind of a, a scare for the common people. But as I mentioned before, uh, there are lots of people are, are trying to addressing this issue by their, uh, by their blind trust on the name of religion and they are putting lives of others at stake. And I think um, uh, for our Christian perspective, um, our neighbor, uh, caring a neighbor is the, is, the, is the second command after loving God, loving your neighbor. I think that's, that's one, of the, one of the best lessons we could learn uh, from our churches around here. So uh, while we are, uh, we are moving to our third and last question. So as you started earlier, that people freaked out, people got uh, scare when they think that things are going out of control and uh, then they behave widely and uh, they expose even themselves that people even even I, I believe that people have learned about themselves and during this <laughs> COVID-19 also what kind of creature they are you know <laughs> sometimes sometimes we don't even realize who we are our dark side is always hidden and these kind of um, uh, circumstances <laughs> actually reveal uh, reveal ourselves as well so what yeah. do you uh, what do you suggest and uh, what do you uh, advise those people who still are in uncertainty and especially as we know as a believers and uh, as Christ followers that, that God is doing mysteriously things which we will see later at the end of the tunnel when we'll see the light. Right now in darkness, we have to totally trust on God's providence. And um, while we are talking about God's providence, how people and how common person can trust God's providence. Because sometimes when we scare, we want instant healing. We want instant uh, miracle. And people uh, try to mix up uh, God's uh, providence with God's um, uh, miraculous healing. Because I, I personally understand that providence is God's presence and, um, and caring act of God while you are still in the process, not when you are at the end of the road. So how, how you, how you um, advise to our viewers and listeners and also uh, that when they are in darkness, when they are in uncertainty uh, and they have no idea what to do. So what are the practices and exercises you can suggest that people can take? Well, it's easy to say, uh, trust God. <laughs> it's hard to actually live it out when you're in the darkness and when you're in those times, but he is our answer during this time. And we may not see God doing miracles right now, and we may not see these great works happen right now. And 
when we see the news reports of more deaths and people losing their jobs and, you know, it breaks my heart and, and people may say, how can you trust a God who allows this? But my advice is that we've got to stay in the word of God. We've got to fill our minds with truth because that's, that's what we have to stand on is God's word and what he says is true. Not what we feel is true. And even if we don't see God doing things right now, he asks us to trust him. And, um, you know, I was sharing last week with my women uh, at First Evan from Psalm 27. It's one of my favorite psalms to go to. It's Again, it was a lament psalm of David when he was talking about trust and he was saying you know whom shall i fear whom shall i dread uh but but things were going bad he was in a dark place and i love the end of his song when he said i would have despaired unless i had believed i would see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living i would have despaired a lot of people right now are feeling discouraged depressed because of the situation. But he believed that he would see God's goodness at some point. Maybe not today, maybe not this year, maybe not even on this earth until he gets to heaven. And he asked God, why did you do that? And God tells him, shows him the picture, and he goes, now I understand. Um, and then he, his advice, I think, what he said in verse 14 of Psalm 27 is, I think, advice that we need to follow today is we are in the middle of this pandemic. Wait for the Lord. Just wait for him to work in his timing, in his way. And he says, be strong and let your heart take courage. And the only way we're going to be strong and courageous is as we rest in his sovereignty and we rest in the fact that God's got this. God is working, even if we can't see it, just because it may seem that he's silent doesn't mean that he's not working. He is, we just can't see it. And so I think David gives us great advice for how to walk through this time of just anticipate what God is doing, even if it doesn't happen right now and then wait on him wait on the lord to work we know that there's going to be an end to this pandemic at some point uh, we all pray it would be sooner than later and it looks like we are beginning to turn a curve but we don't know only god knows what's ahead but the best advice that i can give anyone myself included is Cricket, wait on the Lord and trust that you're going to see what he's doing someday. You're going to understand one day, but right now, trust and believe that he is good. Believe that this Bible is true and what is said about God is true. And that's the best advice I can give. Stay in the word, stay focused on him, and let his word just fill you right now with his promises. Thank you very much for your advice and your wisdom and insights uh, during this time, and especially as we have uh, discussed a couple of uh, themes which emerge from this conversation. First of all, uh, is that uh, we need to trust in God. Uh, while we are trusting in God, if we are in a situation, can God trust us? This is a question we need to ask everybody to to, to each other and also to, uh, to yourself. Number two is uh, we need to care about our neighbors. And um, you know, whether they are sick, whether they are poor, whether they are in need of food, whether they are in need of a care or a call or, um, uh, or a meeting or a virtual meeting, whatever. So take care of your neighbor and uh, have, have, um, have anchored in God's word. Trust that at the end of the day, we will see that what God is doing in uh, hiding places, he will reveal to us. Meanwhile, as a believer, we need to trust in God. Um, it reminds me of one a story of a rabbi and somebody asked him uh, uh, that why, why God uh, uh, 
why where is why god is acting uh, so outrageously in this pandemic and in this chaos around the world and the rabbi responded well this chaos is not an act of god it's an act of nature act of god started when people helping each other so so this is where god entered when we love each other this is the call and today we have learned uh, from keith that uh, might be we don't know the causes might be we don't have answer right now uh, we see the full picture when we will enter into the eternity why this all happening why we are suffering in this world and why innocent people are suffering number 2 is we have uh, biblical stories and character who encourage us and god's word teaches us when we are in this process we need to lament we need to cry to god we need to raise question that is common thing that's fine raising question is not bad it's not non theological act this is a theological act so we need to do that um keith once again thank you very much we are really blessed by your uh, your insight and conversation would you please uh, uh, close our conversation and this uh, discussion by prayer and then uh, we will say goodbye to our viewers and uh, and those who are watching around the world okay and thank you for having me on here i appreciate it very much let's pray father thank you so much that you are in control and we don't understand why this is happening we don't understand the pain the deaths the sickness the poverty the fears but god you do you understand and you know what you're doing and you know your purpose and father i pray for each one who's listening tonight if they've got fears that lord they would sense your presence with them in a very special way that they would would have a peace that you have got them in the palm of your hand and that no matter what happens you are still on the throne and it's part of your overall plan lord thank you for the fact that uh, we're not in this alone thank you that you are with us every step of the way during this pandemic thank you that we can trust you and father i pray that we will be trustworthy to you when we're asked in just our responses thank you father thank you for this time together we love you in jesus name amen thank you very much and those who are watching us thank you very much please stay tuned for more um biblical and um cross cultural conversation god bless you all thank you so our live streaming is closed now and i'm stopped